It is a big turnaround from the state's slow reopening. New state guidance is now allowing for more people at indoor concerts, private gatherings, and sports stadiums. And this all comes just in time for Padres fans to make the most of this weekend. Thanks for joining us for the nightly check-in. I'm Catherine Garcia. Now, before we get to that highly anticipated showdown at Petco Park, NBC7's Amber Frias has more details on the state's new guidance on gatherings. One thing the guidance continues to strongly recommend is for us to limit the number of people from different households that we mix with. While most of the people we spoke with out here told us they are careful about that, they had one big exception, coming to the game to cheer on their Padres alongside other fans. The guidance comes as the state continues to trend in the right direction. As Amber mentioned, the state's recommending against mixing between group gatherings. While face masks are removed for eating and drinking, people stuff to stay at least six feet away from everybody outside their household. The state's new guidelines also recommend, listen to this, that when singing, chanting, or cheering on your favorite team, you do so quietly and with your mask on. Now, that's a guideline not every Padres fan, as you would imagine, may take seriously this weekend. It's like saying you can't scream on a roller coaster. People are easy, easing off a little bit because, you know, they want to have fun. Now, regardless of how you feel about the guidance, the state recommends you strictly follow those recommendations until enough people in the state have been vaccinated. And so far, California has administered more than 24 million doses of the vaccine. That is the highest number of administered shots in any state in the U.S. Tonight's Padres Dodgers matchup is the first of what should be 19 pretty intense meetings this year. Tonight's game is sold out with 15,000 fans allowed. Shortstop star Fernando Tatis Jr. has also been taken off that injured list in time to play. The Dodgers have won seven World Series titles and the Padres have only made the playoffs six times. But with an epic offseason, the Padres now stand as a legitimate threat to the hosting defending to hosting rather the defending World Series champion. Yeah, it's great. It's great to have the increased capacity, um, you know, at a time that I think there's a lot of excitement around the team and in particular, you know, great matchup this weekend between you know, two really good teams and a, and a World Series championship team, you know, and we're building a team to try to accomplish that. So it should be a great matchup. The Padres Dodgers series will last throughout the weekend and the on fire team will break it all down. You can listen to their newest episode wherever you get your podcasts. The music industry, of course, has been hit really hard by the pandemic. Performers, though, are finally gearing up for indoor concerts again with that new guidance. According to Polestar, which provides entertainment industry data, live events lost $30 billion because of the pandemic, affecting not only artists, but the thousands of people who work beside them. Today, we heard from the popular San Diego band POD about their struggle the last year. Did you guys feel that impact financially? Yeah, because like I said, uh, you know, you don't tour, you don't eat, you know what I mean? So we're all this, you know, almost year and a half, um, I've been living off savings. You know, it's just how it, it's how it goes. We're like I said, we're a blue collar band. We're not that band that got the billion dollar contract or you know what I mean, or did all these deals and are sitting on a gold mine. You know, we tour all year long and, and really it, we were supported by those who, who love our music and come to our shows. Well, POD's first tour in more than a year begins August 14th. It's going to start at the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally out there in South Dakota. Big news came this week, allowing those 16 and older to get a vaccine. And as for those younger than 16, it's still too soon to tell, but clinical trials are underway right now. Today, we heard from a 12 year old from San Diego who's taking part in a trial. We always hang out and we just want to get back into being able to hang out uh, apart from just like outside social distance with masks on and actually start going places together. Evie Spengler is taking part in the Pfizer vaccine clinical trial for kids ages 12 to 15. Her mom tells us that Evie received her first shot in December, her second in February. And they still don't know if Evie actually got the vaccine or a placebo and has, for the most part, she's felt symptom free besides a little bit of arm soreness and fatigue. Evie's mom told us that Evie will be monitored for two years as part of the trial. She currently keeps a digital journal of her symptoms and has to take a self-administered COVID test every two weeks.
New details when it comes to double masking to share with you. Wear a cloth mask over a surgical mask for the best protection. Researchers at the UNC School of Medicine used salt particle aerosols to determine how effective different mask combinations were at keeping those particles out of breathing spaces. And they found double masking was certainly most effective, but also the order was important. Wearing a surgical mask over a cloth mask was helpful, but the overall effect was really not much different than wearing the surgical mask by itself. But putting a cloth mask over a surgical mask produce the best results. We're getting a glimpse of the major changes coming to Waterfront Park. County supervisors already approved the money for the new activity space there. There's a dog park, walkways, a basketball court, pickleball courts, and even a mini baseball field. And while those additions are pretty nice, the county's Park and Rec Department did face some questions about the plans last night. For example, people asked, why not a bigger baseball field and rent it out? San Diego's homeless population also came up. We explored other sizes, um, but because we're trying to provide a variety of rec amenities here, the 100 foot foul line really fit best. I don't believe that making a partic this particular area, changing it from what it is, the gardens now to active recreation will necessarily increase our um, our homeless population, our unsheltered population in this area. The Parks and Rec Department says the project now moves from the planning stage to the first steps of construction. Groundbreaking is scheduled for next spring. NASA's next mission to space is closer to being ready for liftoff. The SpaceX crew arrived at the Kennedy Space Center today. Four astronauts will travel to the International Space Station and spend six months there for a science-based mission. The space launch is scheduled for next Thursday. This will be the second crew to go up to the International Space Station in SpaceX's recycled Falcon rocket and Dragon capsule. And before we sign off, here are your current temperatures. Dagmar has an extended forecast at the weather section on the main menu of our Roku and Apple TV app. That's going to do it for our nightly check-in. Have a great night.